Good morning. Welcome to day 68 of our COVID devotions. Uh, we have a special guest with us today. Uh, Miss. Hey, good morning. I just ran here. That's right. Miss Rachel <laughs> Richardson. She is here in person and uh, uh, Miss Graduate herself. Next Tuesday is the day she is going to be done. And uh, so we're super excited and proud of Rachel and uh, ex especially excited today because we had the opportunity just to talk about the word together. So I've been knowing that this was going to happen this week and I've just been excited to share this time with Rachel. So it's going to be a lot of fun. So we're here at the house with the family this morning. Just uh, just recording this Devo for you. So uh, what we're going to talk about is we're going to be in Acts chapter 19. We're going to pick back up here in Acts chapter 19, and we're going to look at how God is using Paul in Ephesus. We know that God would do incredible things with Paul in Ephesus. And so uh, Rachel's going to get us started uh, with one of those stories, and then I'm going to talk about a big riot that happens there in Ephesus. So go ahead, Rachel. Yeah, absolutely. And like Brian was saying, um, Paul is in Ephesus, and the name of the Lord is just spreading by the numbers daily and so um we are in chapter 19 in acts and we're looking at verses 11 through 20 to start off and then we're going to go on to 21 and so on so it starts talking about how um god was doing extraordinary miracles by the hands of paul and the bible says that even handkerchiefs or aprons that touched paul's skin carried away to the sick cured those with diseases and so that is just so cool and um, to think that the name of Jesus is that strong and that powerful that it can cure anyone of any disease. And so, um, and then it goes on to say in 13 how there were some Jewish exorcists that undertook the name of Jesus and invoked those with evil spirits and tried to heal them as if they had that power. And so the evil spirits recognized Jesus and recognized Paul but did not recognize those who um, were doing this action. And so there it says in 16, the man in whom was the evil spirit leaped on them, mastered all of them and overpowered them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. That's a crazy sight. And then this came known to all the residents of Ephesus, both Jews and Greeks, and fear fell upon them and the name of the Lord Jesus was extolled. And so it goes on to talk about in 19, how those who practiced magic arts brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all. And they counted the value and it came out to be 50,000 pieces of silver of books that was just burned. And so verse 20 is the part that's so cool that just sticks out to us. So that the word of the Lord continued to increase and prevailed mightily. So just kind of what stood out to me during this um, few verses that I read was that just the power of the name of the Lord Jesus. And there's a song and it says in the song, the same power that rose Jesus from the grave lives in us. And so we That's see true. how um, the name of Jesus was in effect back then and what power it had to heal those who had diseases and how it influenced us and just changes our hearts and turns us to repentance and allows us also to join together in community and to just turn away from our old self and to just take on um, Jesus and just take on a new heart. So that is definitely a cool verse and that, like it says, the Lord continued to increase and prevail mightily and that still is happening today. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you look at this story in Ephesus and uh, Rachel did a, such a good job of, of telling us that story and explaining it to us that, yeah, it's so incredibly miraculous at this point that God just his power uh, just even from those handkerchiefs and stuff touching Paul's skin that was healing people's diseases and casting out demons and and uh, yeah there's just so many things that we could focus on in those passages but but after this where we really end up in verse 20 is that the Lord is just doing incredible things um, I mean from casting out demons to healing people but his word is continued to go forward and increase and prevail mightily like we said in verse 20 there but what's really cool here is is in Ephesus, God's work still continues to the point that uh, Paul and people are turning away from the Lord because of Paul's message to the point that they're basically getting rid of their idols. I mean, these, these things that they've been worshiping, these things that they've been sacrificing to for so long are getting rid, rid of them. Well, it tells us about a guy by the name of Demetrius later in the chapter. And Demetrius is a businessman and, and he owns a silver shop. And they uh, really in Ephesus, they worship Artemis, uh, who was a goddess. And, and because of this, uh, people turning away from 
worshiping Artemis, what ends up happening is people are not in need of silver. And uh, he says, you know, they've even built the temple there to, to Artemis. And uh, so it's really important here that he stays in business. And so Paul and these guys, they're, they're uh, really as they have a target put on their back at this point. And so they drag them into uh, the, the basically the, the city marketplace uh, and they drag them in there and they decide that what they're going to do is they're going to just do something. Um, and Paul wasn't with uh, two of his Macedonian brothers who were traveling with him at the time. Uh, Timothy and another one of his traveling companions had already been sent to Macedonia. So they were there and Paul's like, hey, I need to go be right in the middle of the temple courts with them and I need to help defend uh, them, help defend the Lord. And, uh, and basically this riot just is just scales up to the point to where for two hours they're just screaming out how much that Artemis is, is the god over, uh, of Ephesus. And so basically this, this riot ends with a clerk of the city who says, hey, listen, we're rioting and Roman rule we shouldn't be doing this we we are going to be into trouble and don't do anything rash uh let basically artemis defend herself if she's going to defend herself and um and so basically we see this riot kind of end at the end of the story and uh the disciples kept paul from rushing into the middle and we see that god ultimately protects uh these men who were following him uh, but like Rachel mentioned earlier, the things that kind of stood out to me were, were the fact of how God's Holy Spirit was working uh, through Paul and, and incredible power. And I think so many times that these guys, these these sons of Skeva, who uh, decided that they were going to try to do what Paul was doing and exercise these demons, and they realized real quick the demons recognize Jesus and they recognize Paul, but we don't know who you are. And they, they jump on him and they beat these guys up. Mm -hmm. They realize real quick that they couldn't fake it till they make it in this situation. Yeah. Uh, and that's a slogan that we all say, and that we, we uh, I guess our generation works <laughs> fake it till we make it right now. Uh, but, but anyway, uh, so they realized they couldn't fake it. And, uh, and I think so many times the things of God it eventually catches up with you and think you can make it. I remember the book of Galatians tells us that God will not be mocked, that you will reap what you sow. Mm -hmm. And uh, we see that happen here. And, uh, and it reminds me, too, just as a, as a minister inside of a church so many times, it's like we're trying to catch... Um, you know, magic and, and lightning in a bottle sometimes. And we think that, you know, there's some way that we, we because we do X and we do Y, that God has to show up and, you know, bless these certain things. And sometimes God just decides how he's going to move at any given time. And you just got to trust the Lord and stick to the, the main things of just worshiping him, sharing the faith, uh, being in the scripture, um, doing all the things that, that Paul and obviously these guys were doing here in Ephesus. So yeah, it's an incredibly cool stories of what God is doing here at Ephesus. And hopefully it just encourages you today to stick to your guns. Any uh, last thoughts here, Rachel, as we kind of close out to something that we've learned or we see or anything else that stood out to you in these chapters? I mean, overall, just thinking about what I read and what you mm -hmm. talked about, like how um, the name of the Lord is so powerful and that doesn't mean that it stopped back in these days. It's still going on today. And we just have to have a heart that is full and that believes in it fully and mm -hmm. to just demonstrate that to all those around. And, you know, even the evil spirits know the name of Jesus. And Absolutely. we have to make sure that everyone knows the name of Jesus because it has the power to save. And how God was with the men in the temple. He is with us. He hasn't left us in this time. And we are to fear because we're supposed to trust in him and rely on him and just turn all those things that are just turning us away from God. And, you know, just burn them, like he said, whether physically or metaphorically, um, mm. just hand it over to God. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's interesting here that the, the demon says, I, I know who Paul is and I, and I know who Jesus is. And I, and I think about that so many times as like, you know, we, we have a knowledge of those people, but obviously these demons weren't following Jesus. And it really comes down to us, not just knowing them, but deciding that just like you were saying, Rachel, that we're going to make them Lord of our life. We're going to make God Jesus. We're going to make him Lord of our life. And we're going to follow after him wholeheartedly and just give everything else to him in the good times we're going to worship and we're going to follow him in the bad times we're going to worship and we're going to follow him so Absolutely. Uh, so whether it's a great day for you or it's a tough day today we hope this encourages you and uh, we look forward to seeing you all soon and uh, we'll see you guys soon bye oh yeah bye guys have a great day